uh, Station Houston on two, Satoshi, can you call us on three, please? Station, this is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is Station. We're ready for the event. Houston ACR, this is Mission Control. Please call Station for a voice check. Station, this is Houston ACR. How do you hear me? Houston ACR, Station has you loud and clear. How me? Got you loud and clear. Please stand by for opening remarks. Today, our students will have an out-of-this-world experience. Thanks to the Rhode Island Science Teachers Association and their partners at the East Bay Education Collaborative, NASA astronauts will answer their questions from space. This is a great opportunity to see science, technology, engineering, and math, what we call STEM, in action. I hope that, as they talk with our astronauts, our students imagine themselves as astronauts, or engineers, or scientists. I know that they have the talent and drive to reach the stars. And now, here's our first question. Hi, my name is Bailey. How do you drink in space? Hi, Bailey. First off, to all the students and teachers of the Rhode Island Science Teachers Association, welcome to the International Space Station. So drinking in space can actually be a little bit tricky, so we usually use these drink bags with straws to keep the water or, or whatever drink you're having contained. Um, also, sometimes it helps to use centrifugal force to get the liquid to, to one side or another as necessary. To drink it, you can just drink it through the straw, or sometimes it's a little more fun to make a sphere. And then you can drink it. Can't do that back on Earth. Thanks for the question, Bailey. Hi, my name is Hudson. Do you have TVs in space? Hey, Hudson. Uh, well, no and yes. Uh, we don't have TV straight up, but we can watch TV on our computers, and we have a projector um, that we can watch movies on. And so th the ground will stream either live TV or TV shows that we request or movies that we request, and we put them on hard drives. And whenever we have some free time, we can watch movies with our friends and our crewmates, or um, we can just sit in our crew quarters and watch TV on our computer. Hi, my name is Keone. How do you exercise in space? Hi, Keone. That's a great question. Exercise is actually very important in space because back on Earth, just walking around and doing everyday things, you're working your muscles. But here uh, on the International Space Station, because we're weightless and float, we're not using all those muscles on a regular basis. So we actually are scheduled for exercise every single day. Now, how do you lift weights in space if everything floats, right? So we actually use, uh, it's called the A-RED. It's an advanced resistive exercise device, and it has vacuum tubes, and that's how it creates the resistance. And then we have a bike up here and a treadmill for cardio exercises. And on the treadmill, you wear a little outfit, and it pulls you down to the treadmill. Hello, my name is Gabriel. What has been your favorite experience in space? Hey, Gabriel. Well, uh, I think my favorite experience is just the ability to float. 
So if I let go, we're actually hanging on with our feet. If I let go, I'll float up and just uh, can kind of hang out here. Um, but along with floating, I think my, my most favorite thing I did was doing a spacewalk because I was able to go outside and experience space in a very unique setting and kind of in my own little private spaceship in my spacesuit. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Hi, my name is Ellie, and my question is, what is your favorite food to eat in space? Hi, Ellie. So, eating in space is, for the most part, similar to eating back home. We generally like to often take the water out of things when we ship them, so we dehydrate them because water weighs a lot and it's hard to get up here. Um, but you can also play with your food here on the space station. Thanks, Frank. So that was an M&M, and that is probably my favorite thing to eat here on the space station. Hi, this is Daisy. My question is, how do you sleep in space? Hey, Daisy. You know, we sleep really comfortable in space because, again, we're floating. And so we have what are called crew quarters, which are basically our own little small bedrooms about the size of a phone booth. And in there we have uh, sleeping bags. We each have our own sleeping bag that we bungee to the wall so that it doesn't float away. And basically inside the sleeping bag, you just kind of float like this. And you sleep super comfortably. And what the sleeping bag does is it just kind of keeps you in place and it keeps you from banging against the walls uh, at night because uh, you're just kind of sleeping and floating. And so it just keeps you in place. But you actually sleep really comfortable uh, because you're not laying on anything, and it's, uh, it's almost like sleeping on a cloud. It's pretty cool. Hello, my name is Maggie. Have you ever seen a black hole before? Hi, Maggie. I have not ever seen a black hole. Thankfully, I think if we got close enough to see it, it might be bad news for us. Um, but we do have various um, sensors out there to detect things like that that are mounted on the space station. Um, for example, we have the alpha magnetic spectrometer uh, on the uh, truss of the space station, and that can detect uh, things that we couldn't see with our uh, own eyes or things that we previously haven't been able to detect before. Hi, my name is Eliza. How do you wash in space? Hey, Eliza, that's a great question. Because without gravity, it's really hard to have running water. You would basically have to have a huge vacuum on the ground that would suction the water uh, down for you to have running water. So we don't really have that. Uh, like Jasmine told you, we use these little water bags. And you can wash in one of two ways. You can either put the water directly on you from that bag or you can use one of these, and this is a washcloth, which we basically have in this little silver bag, and you plug it into our water machine and shoot hot water into this, and then you have a hot towel, and basically you give yourself a towel bath. Uh, and we get one of these every couple days, and so you use, you use it for one time, and then you put it back in the bag, and you put hot water back in it, and then you can use it again. Uh, so we stay pretty clean despite not having actively running showers. Hello, my name is Anderson Mendoza Brau. I am from Central Falls, and my question for you is what do you do at the space station for fun? Thank you. Hi, Anderson. So we have a lot of fun up here on the, play, on the space station. We also, of course, do a lot of work on the space station, but we do live and work up here. So in our free time, sometimes we just spend time together, hang out, watch a movie like Frank talked about earlier, have some dinner together. We have a couple instruments up here. Some people like to play the guitar, and, and every now and then we'll all sing along. And go and look out. We have an amazing view of the Earth and of the space station itself from up here. So a lot of times people like to go look out the cupola windows. Hi, my name is Matt from the Lawn Avenue School in Jamestown, Rhode Island. My question is, what type of jobs do you have to do on the space station? 
Hey, Matt, uh, they keep us pretty busy up here. So the International Space Station is actually a national and an inter international laboratory. So one of our main purposes is to conduct science up here. And we do science experiments on board, uh, but we also do Earth-based science where we just observe the Earth and the changes that the Earth is undergoing. Um, so we work for about 10 hours every day. A couple of those hours are to maintain our fitness, like Jasmine was talking about earlier. Uh, and the rest of the time we do all sorts of different science projects, uh, studying our own bodies, studying cells, uh, how materials and different fluids interact in space. Uh, and then, of course, the space station is one big giant machine, and so we have to do a lot of maintenance on it. Uh, so some days, if something breaks, you have to spend time and fix it, especially the toilet. That's really important to keep running every day. Um, but lots of other parts and pieces, essentially they have what's a, a usable life, right? So we want to replace it before they break because uh, we don't want them to break. And so we'll spend some time doing maintenance where we just replace uh, entire units at a time to make sure that this whole system keeps running uh, pretty well. Hi, my name is Olivia Rapuche. I'm in sixth grade and I go to Monsignor Clark School. My question for the ISS is, we have power lines to bring power to our homes. How do we bring power to the ISS? Hi, Olivia. You're right, power is very important and it's a little different up here, but we actually use the sun for our energy. So we have these huge solar arrays on the outside of the space station. I actually also love looking out the cupola windows at the uh, golden solar arrays. And those take the energy from the sun and convert that into electricity. And then we distribute that all throughout the space station to use. Frank actually, uh, not too long ago, a few months ago, went on a spacewalk and he helped update those solar arrays to newer ones so we could get even, generate even more power. My name is Lily, I'm from St. Peter's School in Warwick, Rhode Island, and today my question is, what happens if astronauts get sick in space? Hi Lily, well, uh, the biggest thing we try to do is try not to get sick, and so most of us try to uh, live pretty healthy lifestyles, and we also try, try to stay in pretty good shape while we're up here. But if somebody were to get sick, uh, oftentimes we'll have a doctor on board, like, like me, um, or if there aren't any doctors on board, all the astronauts get uh, certified as uh, chief medical officers, meaning that they go through medical training uh, so that they're able to respond to any sort of emergency uh, that we have here in space. Uh, but the reality is because we stay in pretty good shape and we're only exposed to six other humans, uh, and those humans, before they come up to the space station, we go through quarantine, which now after COVID, we're all pretty familiar with. But as long as astronauts have been flying to space, we would essentially quarantine for two weeks prior to make sure that we didn't have any active illnesses or any viruses. And so when you get to the space station, you're usually pretty healthy and you don't any introduce any new uh, viruses to the station. And so for the most part, we all stay pretty healthy up here. Hi, I'm Avery. I'm in sixth grade at Warwick Man School in Little Compton, Rhode Island. My question is, can you see things like the Northern Lights and lightning from space? Hi, Avery. So I don't know if you know this, but I actually just got up here uh, a little over two weeks ago and I saw my first aurora yesterday uh, looking out the cupola windows. We can see them both in the northern hemisphere and in the southern hemisphere. Um, also, we can see lightning and it looks, uh, it looks really cool from up here. It looks like a little light show because you'll see flashes here and there. And actually our crewmate, uh, Andy Mogensen from Denmark is actually doing an experiment where he's um, taking f uh, photographic, photographic images of the uh, lightning strikes. Hi, my name is Kylie and my question is, does spending time in space affect your neurological functions? Hey, Kylie, that's a great question because uh, space does affect our entire uh, body, really. And we are the most sensitive part of the uh, space station. So um, it can affect the neurological system, primarily your eyes. And we're not really sure if that's due to either radiation exposure or pressure changes due to fluid shifts that happen here in space. Uh, but the system that really, uh, two systems that really get affected the most by space are um, our skeletal system and our muscles, so our musculoskeletal system. Uh, and that's because on Earth, 
when you're standing, when you're walking, you put a lot of stress on your bones. And that's actually a good thing because it keeps them strong and your bones produce uh, your blood and they play a huge role in your immune system. And so keeping your bone health is really important. And that's part of what the reason that we work out so much up here. Uh, and then because you're not standing, you're not supporting your weight, your muscles, especially your lower um, body muscles, your legs, tend to atrophy, meaning they get they kind of shrink a little bit because we're not using them as much. And so again, part of the reason that we exercise. So those two systems uh, probably are affected much more than the neurological system. Uh, your cardiovascular system can also be affected. Your blood vessels are essentially uh, were exposed to higher radiation up here, and so that can have long-term effects. Uh, but we, uh, we also either run on a treadmill or ride a bike up here almost every day to keep our cardiovascular health. My name is Maeve. What made you decide to become an astronaut, and how did you apply to become one? Hi, Maeve. So I decided at a really young age I wanted to be an astronaut. I was in elementary school, and I actually did a book report on Valentina Tereshkova, the first woman in space, a Russian cosmonaut. And from that moment on, I decided I wanted to become an astronaut. And as I learned more and more, as I got older and studied it more and researched into what it took to become an astronaut, um, I realized it was something I really wanted to do. I was interested in space. I loved flying. and um, I really loved all the science fields in general. And then applying to become one. So many years after that first uh, dream of becoming an astronaut, uh, NASA said they were uh, accepting applicants, and I put in an application. And honestly, the hardest part was in between each round, you have to wait to see if you made, it, uh, made the cut for the next round. So uh, if you don't apply, you won't get selected. Um, my question is, does space change your circadian rhythm? Hi, Nadaly. Well, uh, you would think that it might, right? Because we orbit the Earth 15 times a day. And so every 45 minutes, we're seeing either a sunrise or a sunset. So if we use the sun uh, to maintain our circadian rhythms like we do on Earth, uh, it'd be really challenging. But uh, we don't actually have that many windows. We have this beautiful cupola, um, but it's only a small part of the space station. And so for the most part, we have artificial lighting here. And we just stay on what's called uh, GMT, Greenwich Mean Time. And so everybody uh, that works on the space station throughout the world, so in Houston or in Scuba in Japan, in Munich, in, uh, in Europe, or in Moscow, everybody operates on GMT so that we all share common time. And so because of that, we, we generally wake up at uh, 6 or 7 a.m. GMT, and we go to sleep around 10 uh, or 11 p.m. GMT. And so everybody operating on that time actually maintains a pretty good circadian rhythm. Hi, I'm Kathy Jimenez Long, and I'm Kathy Justin Eller from the Rhode Island Science Teachers Association. The Rhode Island Science Teachers Association, Rhode Island students, and our entire state Thank the crew for inspiring our next generation of scientists and engineers. Rhode Island students are poised to become some of the greatest problem solvers in the world. They are at the precipice of new frontiers, which we can only now begin to imagine. These include possibilities like living on the moon or perhaps Mars, navigating to the depths of our ocean or beneath the ice of nearby moons. We hope this experience of talking with astronauts nurtures our students' STEM potential and helps them strive to make our beautiful blue world a better place, both within Rhode Island and beyond. Thank you everyone for your many contributions to this downlink experience and our statewide astronaut Lollapalooza. Thank you so much for your great questions uh, to the Rhode Island Science Teachers Association. We hope you enjoyed your time on the International Space Station. We'll see you next time. Station, this is Houston ACR, and that concludes our event. Thank you to all the participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.